The Dallas Mavericks had a very weird season last year. After losing Jalen Brunson in the offseason and their move of Christian Wood really not working out for them, they ended up trading for Kyrie Irving after he demanded a trade midseason. After landing Kyrie, as you would expect, the offense was spectacular. However, this team could not defend at all. As a result of that defense being as bad as it was, as well as Luka and Kyrie not actually playing together all that much in the second half of the season, the team ended up missing the playoffs entirely. Not just missing it through the play-in, but literally not even getting a top 10 seed in the conference. Luckily, this offseason, they made a ton of moves, many of which I think could turn this roster around, but it's also not enough to feel super confident in that. I think there is a good chance this Dallas Mavericks team could win over 50 games or it could be a complete disaster. I guess we'll have to wait and find out but until then let's speculate. Before we get into today's video, I want to talk about our sponsor, Factor. If you're like me, aka a 20-something dude that just has absolutely no idea how to take care of yourself, generally food seems to come into my life just as it does rather than with any kind of tactfulness or plan to it. And because of that, that makes eating consistently and eating healthy pretty damn difficult. I've been trying to stop being just a food goblin that just consumes whatever appears in front of me and actually be an adult about my diet. And luckily today's sponsor Factor is a great way to do that. Factor makes your nutrition goals easy by delivering fresh, never frozen meals right to your door. I know the health benefits are what might stand out to you initially, but eating on a consistent schedule is a huge help for your body as well. And if you have a hectic schedule, being able to prepare something quickly like you can with Factor really helps. Only two minutes in the microwave and your meal is ready. Another thing that's great with Factor is it is very customizable. You can specify options to your dietary restrictions. There are vegan options, calorie smart options if you're trying to lose weight, keto options if you're trying to avoid carbs. And for me, as you'll know if you've seen this advertisement already, I always go with Protein Plus because I am a carnivore. Towards the start of the year, I really struggled to stay on top of my meal plan. I found it hard to find the time to prepare my meals, which resulted in me picking fast options that were not necessarily the healthiest ones, and especially not even the cheapest ones. But because of factor the past few months, my diet has significantly improved. When I don't have time to prepare something, I get the speed paired with the nutrition as well as a great taste. Head to factor75.com and use my code RUSTYBUCKETS50 to get 50% off of your first box. Again, that is code RUSTYBUCKETS50 to get 50% off of your first box. Shout out to Factor for sponsoring this video. First things first, let's take a look at the new additions to this roster because I really think they will make or break this season. Luka and Kyrie should be good enough and solid enough. They're gonna be a plenty dominant offense one way or the other. It's really on the rest of these guys to fill the voids on offense and and especially on defense. The thing that could be ultimately the most consequential was the rookie they drafted, Derek Lively, who is a defensive-minded center who also works as a really good lob target on offense, and he's even shown signs of potentially being a three-point shooter. Now, rookie centers can be a little bit questionable at times because you're putting a lot of pressure on them to anchor an NBA defense, especially one that might not have that many substantially good perimeter defenders on it. I like Derek Lively a lot, but I do think there is a chance they're just putting too much pressure on him out of the gate. Next, of course, for a big man, they traded for Rashawn Holmes. Rashawn definitely has a history of being a solid enough defensive five. However, I just don't know that he's really a starting center in the NBA. So already out of the gate, the center position is a little bit shaky because we're talking about either a rookie saving you or a backup center being your starting center. 
Center. But they also signed Grant Williams, and I think that was a spectacular signing. Grant is somebody that I think Celtics fans kind of turned on and acted like he just was not that great. And don't get me wrong, the dude had some annoying tendencies. Him talking shit directly to Jimmy Butler was definitely one of those things that stood out. He's a positive defender. He is really difficult to move. He's very strong, uh, even though he's not that tall. He's a pretty solid body, which is important for perimeter defense against bigger forwards. And he can hit his threes, especially out of the corner. And offensively speaking, for pretty much everybody on this team that isn't Luka and Kyrie, all that's really all that required of them is that they're going to hit their open threes. Speaking of hitting open threes, they also signed Seth Curry on a really cheap deal. I honestly don't feel as though Seth Curry really got that much worse in his last year with Brooklyn. Rather, he just simply got moved down in the rotation because they wanted to give other guys minutes. So getting him at $4 million a year feels like it could be an absolute steal to me. And Seth obviously played, I think, his best basketball in Dallas. So very good move on that front. They also signed Dante Exum, who's been out of the league for a bit. And the last time he was in the league, he was not good. However, from what I understand overseas, he's changed his game quite a bit. And specifically, he is a damn good defensive player, which of course is what this team is in need of. So maybe after some overseas development, Dante Exum actually is a rotation player in the NBA, and maybe he could make a real impact defensively. It's also worthy of note that not only are we going to see these guys on this team that were not there last year, but there also should be some development, at least to some degree, from Jaden Hardy and Josh Green. Jaden Hardy last year showed that he could be a very significant offensive weapon, and really if there's anybody that's going to be creating their shot that's not Luka and Kyrie, Jaden would be a great option. Josh Green is a really positive perimeter defender and his three ball has started to go in and he even has a little bit of creating ability himself. Again, I'm not sure how much you really want to utilize that when you have Luka and Kyrie on the floor, but secondary shot creation is never a bad thing. So first thing, let's just talk about the offense because that's what's going to be the easiest here. What are the Dallas Mavericks going to look like offensively? Now, obviously, everything's going to be built around what Luka and Kyrie do, so it really just comes down to what everyone else is going to do around that, and luckily for them, I think they have catered this roster to that type of system where you have the likes of Grant Williams, you have Tim Hardaway Jr., Seth Curry, you have Jaden Hardy, all guys that are going to get open shots off of Luka and Kyrie, Josh Green as well. Derek Lively and Rashawn Holmes should probably get a healthy dose of dump off passes and alley oops and offensive rebound putbacks and things like that. Perhaps Derek Lively's three ball is actually something that is utilized to some degree, but I'm not anticipating that, at least not in his rookie year. But yeah, those guys are going to be typical big men, just finish in the paint. That's all we really need from you. Ultimately, I think that the offense on this team could have a fairly shaky and loose system them around it and still ultimately end up being one of the best offenses in the league. So if there's actual structure to it, if there's actual strategy to it, they could be potentially a top three offense in all of basketball. However, you cannot win a championship and you cannot be an excellent team while only being excellent on one end of the floor. You can maybe get to being a pretty good team while being excellent and mid on the other end. However, the Dallas Mavericks were horrifyingly bad defensively with Luka and Kyrie last year. So the ultimate question for how good this team can be is do these moves fix the defense? Derek Lively and Rashawn Holmes, as I mentioned, is kind of shaky ground as your big man. You're putting a lot of pressure on a rookie five or a lot of pressure on a backup center. Josh Green and Grant Williams are both positive perimeter defenders. And the fact that they're both going to be starters, I think is a very positive thing for this team. If Lively does actually work out defensively, this is of course the ideal scenario. You have him and then you have two very good perimeter defenders and then Luca, who is is fine defensively and Kyrie who can be fine if he's buying into the right system it really depends so at that point I do think you can have a pretty respectable defense where you have some solid perimeter defensive options and solid interior options I think it'd be pretty insane if this Mavericks team ended up being an excellent defense but they have the pieces where if things work out I think they could be pretty solid really it just becomes a question of how much 
much are you going to play guys like Seth Curry or Tim Hardaway Jr. and even to some extent Jaden Hardy because you don't want to have too many bad defenders on the floor and uh, those guys can contribute positively offensively but like I don't know if I would play Luka Kyrie and Tim Hardaway Jr. a lot or Luka Kyrie and Seth Curry a lot really those guys should probably be in the game when one of the other is off of the floor. It's also worthy of mention that Jason Kidd does have a history of making the Mavericks a much better defense than the personnel would imply that they could be. So I do think there is a world where the Mavericks are a top three offense and then like a top 15, but like way closer to 15 than one defense in the NBA. And that's good enough to be a 50 win team. And that's good enough to at least make some noise in the playoffs. However, this is all still feeling a little flimsy to me and still feeling like it can just go either way. And really, it's important to factor in how much is at stake if this doesn't go right. Luka Doncic could be gone sooner rather than later. There have already been multiple reports that Dallas's front office is quite concerned with that possibility. There's also not a crazy amount of wiggle room with this roster. The young players that they do have are kind of pivotal to their rotation. So at best, you'd be trading them for just more veteran and experienced guys, but it's not as simple as trading off young guys who weren't playing anyways. Like Josh Green and Jaden Hardy, I'm expecting to get pretty significant minutes on this team. And Derek Lively, more likely than not, will at least play some big role with this team as well. So not exactly ideal that you have so much banking on these young players and not exactly ideal that they're really the only assets you can move because you probably don't feel all that confident trading long-term future first round picks when Luca's future is kind of in question. This is similar to something that happened with the Cavaliers back in the 2009-ish, 2010-ish, when the fear of losing LeBron made trading future first round picks kind of terrifying, but not trading those future first round picks also kind of ended up being why he left. So it's a, it's a weird position to be in for sure. That said, I do believe that this Mavericks front office did a pretty good job this offseason. They didn't get any kind of like slam dunk move to be sure, but they did do a good job putting good role players around Luka and Kyrie. And if you believe that Luka and Kyrie is enough offense to build a contender, then I think that's perfectly valid. Uh, it just really comes down to if you can build a proper defense around them. I also saw rumors of trading for Buddy Heald was a thing I would probably focus in on trading for a defensive guy if anything I would try and trade for like an OG and a Nobi something like that would definitely work out very well for them you know Jaden Hardy and Josh Green for him that's a compelling offer for Toronto for sure if they're blowing it up although it looks like they might be trading for Dame but that's a story for another day anyways that's my thoughts on Dallas I really feel like they could go either way and I'm excited to see it I would like to see Lucas stay in Dallas but I would also be in entertained by the complete shit show of him asking for a trade. One way or the other, I'm going to be entertained. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video and goodbye.